This episode is brought to you by PopCultureZone.com. For all your cleaning and pressing needs and as low as $5.99 a book, be sure to check them out. With over 8,000 books cleaned and pressed, PopCultureZone.com. What's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Submans Comics, and we made it to Friday once again, so that can mean only one thing. It's time for Last Call. That's right. We're talking about Last Call. We're talking about Final Order Cutoff. We're going to give you our picks for books that are hitting that Final Order Cutoff this Monday, June 22nd. We actually have some great books this week, don't we, Jack? We do. We do. And now we're dealing with a multi-distributor system so we're not just bringing these books from diamond but we're also coming with those dc comics books from ucs and lunar so we're dealing with multiple final order cutoff lists but we got a lot of great books like you mentioned it sounds like comics are coming back and there's definitely some heaters on this list yeah again that full list of foc other than just our picks will be over there on simplemanscomics.com they get a comment last week that we were missing dc but we will have that corrected in this week so with that being said, we're going to get into our first pick, starting right now with that Snake Eyes Dead Game number one. Now, you know, Brian, I'm a huge Rob Liefeld fan and a huge G.I. Joe fan, specifically Snake Eyes. So this is like my perfect wheelhouse book. But I got to be honest with you, to everybody out there in the Simplements Comics YouTube family, this is not a book I see as a major investment book. Um, and that's mostly because... This is a, such a great book, such a marketable book, that every retailer in the world saw money involved in this and got involved with doing a retailer exclusive variant. And there are some amazing, amazing variants. Head over to exclusivevariants.com where you can see some of these great G.I. Joe, Snake Eyes, Dead Game variants uh, that are available for sale from various retailers right now. But uh, you know, I think that is going to hurt the 1 in 10 and the 1 in 25, which you know that we're a big advocate to these 1 in 25 IDW variants. I think it's going to hurt their overall um, sellability uh, above that ratio level um, because there's, they're going to be more available than a typical IDW series is. Um, and I just think that that's due to the fact that so many people are excited about a Snake Eyes solo series, especially if this kind of has the feel of that early Deadpool, not not that late kind of, you know, jokester Deadpool, but that mercenary with a mouth. Um, I think if we get a little bit of that with uh, with uh, Snake Eyes, except a, a, a silent mercenary, I think that will be uh, in for a great series. So believe it or not, guys, this one for me is Reader Buzz, but that's one thing we're going to do always at Simple Men's Comics is we're always going to keep it real with you. We're always going to let you know how we see the market. Yeah, it's one I'm definitely interested in reading, that's for sure, just being G.I. Joe fans. But like you said, it is going to be saturated with retail exclusives. This one, I'm going to pick up cover A, and then I've also pre-ordered a couple of those exclusives because the art's just so good. Oh, yeah. Next up, we got a book from Marvel, and we're talking about that big event we're talking about empire with empire number one this has a bunch of different covers for marvel yeah this is that big event series that marvel keeps trying to get everyone excited for that i gotta be honest with you i'm really not and it, this is just my opinion um and i don't i don't begrudge anybody else and i would really love in the comment section for any of you that are excited about empire get me hyped for it please let me know why i need to jump on board with this because i'm a big marvel reader and you know, even any of the breadcrumbs of this series just really haven't captivated me. Um, this is a good big issue. Marvel's been, this is their big kind of 2020 event, right? Um, you're looking at a, a very large mini series with a whole lot of variants up to those super high ratio variants. Um, you know, there's, there's those tie-in books that we've seen, those one-shot tie-ins. So this is a big event, but maybe one that I think I may sit out. Uh, this, this may be omnibus for me, Brian. Yeah, this is one I'll probably read the main event, you know, the, the actual Empire mm -hmm. issues, but I'll, I'll, I'll usually sit out the tie-ins. Um, at least in it for the first few issues, see how it goes. Um, I'm kind of with you on it. I'm not too hyped yet, but hopefully picking it up and starting to read it. Um, I've read a couple of the, the lead-in to this event, a couple of those issues, and I've kind of been left wanting. But either way, 
it's a big event. It's from Marvel, and there's viewers out there that should be aware that this is hitting final word cutoff. Absolutely. Sticking with Marvel and going with that big title they have, we're talking about Venom number 26. This is a big issue. Uh, 25, we saw a little a little kind of cameo uh, of virus that got everybody excited. A lot of people are anticipating that full appearance in 26. We don't know if that's going to come to fruition. You know how Donny Cates works. kind of strings you along a little bit. But 26 is an interesting issue, Brian. And the thing that's interesting about it is what actually happened today. We're recording this on Thursday. And um, there was an uh, incentive variant added to this mix. Originally, when this book was solicited, um, the Diamond Order forms only had two books listed, the regular cover, as well as those terrible available on Wednesday variants that are essentially like solid colors that just say available on Wednesday. I appreciate what Marvel's trying to do. I like the idea of a spite variant uh, taking shots at DC for messing up new comic book day. I definitely... Uh, made my opinion known on three up three down even dropped the f-bomb about how i feel about that but uh you know i i think that this this variant program that they're doing is stupid and i really would implore all retailers avoid those terrible terrible variants don't even buy that direct for your stores that's the kind of crap that gets stuck on your shelves let's all skip over that and show marvel that if they're not willing to pay artists to actually do covers we're not willing to pay the same price for their books so that's something I would really say is let's let's avoid that cover as as a community. But cover A is a great cover, Philip Tan, um, as well as that one in fifty variant is amazing. It's Mark Bagley, really throwback, really gives you a little bit of nineties nostalgia with a kind of some updated looks. Um, feels a little bit like a different angle of that famous poster that came in ASM three sixty five. But great, this is a great issue. I think this is one that's going to be on a lot of people's radar. Yeah, I think they should just get to the point where Marvel does their solicits just for Venom. They shouldn't even put anything. They should just put some Donny Cates tweets in there because he's definitely one that is good at soliciting in the book and yes. getting people hyped up for the issues. We just talked about Venom 26, but we also have Venom 25, the second print coming out, but it's got a great... It's got a new wraparound cover for it, right? Yeah, there's actually two covers available this week for Venom 25. And usually when we talk about late printings, we kind of throw them in at the end. We don't really give them kind of their own spot and shine, but this one feels a little bit different. This virus character is highly anticipated. I think he's going to really fall in line with Null and with uh, Dylan Brock as far as kind of important and iconic characters within this Down and Cates run. Um, whether or not you've got, you know, a, a, a you're self-invested in 25 or in 26 as that first appearance. Either way, you're going to have a release date. We're going to be able to grab both. We didn't get any of that garbage one in 25 variant second print stuff or anything like that. So these are available for 499. You mentioned that wraparound gorgeous cover. Um, I'm, I would butcher the other gentleman's name that begins with an R that did that, that other cover. But I really like this cover. If this cover was a one in 50 cover, this would be big money to me. I, I really like the kind of zoom in portrait look of Venom. Um, I think, I think it's, it's a really dope cover. So I like both of these 25 second prints. Yes, I've got 25 first print. But the way, again, I look at late printings, these are variant covers. So I'm grabbing these um, and putting these in the PC as well as kind of holding these because my Donny Cates box, my Donny Cates Venom box, I grab multiples of every book because I really feel strongly that this is a major iconic run. Moving back over into the indie sector for a minute, we go to Vault Comics with that Engine Ward number one. This has three covers for it. It's got that pulp cover, but it's also got a Jen Hickman FOC variant, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I really like those pulp covers. They've replaced that Vault vintage line. Um, still kind of giving you that old school vintage look, hitting you with those like 60s, 70s kind of pulp science fiction, noir magazines, um, really kind of showing homage to areas of our hobby that have long been overlooked. But this is another great series from Vault that is, is kind of sure to get that independent comics reader buzz. The artist on this one is Joe Isma, who you may be familiar with. He's done a lot of variant covers uh, for various publishers, most notably The Woods, number one from Boom Studios. Uh, he did the variant cover that 
that does pretty well for that book. So he's an artist I'm a big fan of. This is a series kind of almost has that Thor look on the cover. So it'll be interesting to see how this one plays out. Stick with Indy for a moment. We're going over to Antarctic Press this time with Patriotica number one. This one has a cover A from Elizabeth Torque, but there's also a bunch of store exclusives for this one as well, right? Definitely, definitely. Uh, you know, it's a, we talked about that Power Girl homage before we jumped on the uh, mic here. Um, definitely cool. Uh, and the Antarctic Press, one thing that they've done a very good job, um, very much like Scout Comics, is scouring those Kickstarter pages. So this was a Kickstarter comic, um, and it, it gives publishers a good idea of the demand for a series so you know they put out an issue they put it on kickstarter if it's fully backed or if it goes way over their backing amount it gives a publisher a good idea that there's a demand for this character or this book or this genre um, and we've seen books go from kickstarter to published in a series with variants and the whole nine um, several times now seems to be a good marketing strategy right now for publishers and a good way for them to recruit new talent yeah, and it seems like it's kind of dragging right on into the popularity of, we've talked about on this show, Stargirl right now is a very popular TV show. The comic's getting popular again. This one kind of has that similar, I don't say plot, but you know, you got the teenage girl and then becomes, gets superpowers. But either way, Patriotica is from Antarctic Press and it's hitting FOC this Monday night. Moving back over to the big two with DC Comics, we get Nightwing number 72. This ties into that whole Joker War, and this is also supposed to have a punchline appearance, correct? That's right, and that, that's what I expect to drive this issue, reader buzz, as you know, people have really kind of gotten invested in the Nightwing series as it relates to the Joker War. Also, there's a lot of anticipation for kind of punchline starting to show up in series outside of Batman. So I think that there will be some attention on that. But also, you know what my favorite part of this book is, Brian, that Alan Quad variant. Um, I've really become a fan of his art. I think he's kind of a slept on underrated artist. He's done some great work with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for our channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics. God bless you, Brian. And I think that uh, he uh, he's an uh, artist to really keep an eye out for. And I think these DC cover bees are a great way to um kind of expose people to a new artist where you're not spending twenty dollars on an exclusive you're able to buy this for cover price so check out these cover bees for nightwing 72 um and nightwing throughout this run because he's been doing the last few covers because i really think that this may be an artist you may not be familiar with but you may dig yeah he definitely did the cover b for 71 also which mm -hmm. was a great cover Then sticking with DC, going back to that Scott Snyder goodness, we have Dark Knight's Death Metal number two, which is might want to be on alert, right? Because there might be a first appearance in this one. Yeah, uh, both you know, Games Radar, CBR are are both reporting that Robin King will show up in this issue number two. A lot of people were anticipating number one. Um, if you remember the Key Collector Comics app originally had listed under issue number one, the first appearance of Robin King. They had to change that because obviously if you read issue number one, there was no Robin King in issue number one. So now the attention has gone to number two. Mainstream media sources are reporting it. So I expect a lot of speculator investor attention to, to go to issue number two. Now, the interesting thing is this is a series where a lot of retailers do exclusives throughout the series. So issue two, three, four, and five. But I don't know how much that will actually impact it as this is not an incentive-based series. So if you compare it to the original uh, Dark Metal, you know, the, those original issues still retain value no matter how many store exclusives were made or, um, you know, how, how much went into the print run. So I, I'm kind of bullish on this series as a whole. I think it's going to do well. I don't know whether the Robin King will capture the community or, if, you know, everybody's just feverish for a new first appearance, specifically from DC um, and specifically tying into this Dark Knight stuff. So and we'll see. But either way, I think this is going to have a lot of demand. And we certainly know what those regular price variants will do because we saw the interest in issue number one for both the Matina and the um, art germ variant. Um, so issue number two, I think we get a little artist switch up, but uh, you know, I think there will be similar demand for those regular price variants. Yeah, Mac, I'm excited to see how it plays out just from a reader level. Um, looks like one of those groblins gets promoted, but either way, 
uh, Dark Knight's Death Metal number two hits FOC. And like he said, there's quite a few store exclusives for this one as well. Moving away from the big two over to Image, we have a surprise drop. You know, Robert Kirkman likes to do that. We're talking about Negan Lives number one. Yeah, this is super cool. So the idea behind this is when we got the kind of the last issue of Walking Dead, right, the update on where they are, Negan wasn't a part of that story. So the idea is now we're getting this one shot that's going to kind of give us an idea of where Negan ends up, how the whole Negan story turns out. Um, And for Walking Dead fans, this is going to cause major reader buzz. I actually think this one has a solid chance of doing well on the secondary market, quite simply because there hasn't been Walking Dead material. And I I imagine that people are going to get really excited at the idea of grabbing a new Walking Dead issue. And there's very few properties that when they get hot, not saying it's always hot, but when they get hot, have the potential to do what Walking Dead does. And if you don't believe that, just go think back to 192 and 193 and what that looked like. Now, the distribution of this is very interesting. Robert Kirkman is doing this to try to support the Bring Back the Hobby um, initiative to really kind of kickstart LCSs and hobby shops, kind of getting themselves back running again. So he is sending copies of this book to all shops for free, and they are to sell them for the $4.99 cover price. This is going to really also be what separates the good shops from the bad shops, as I imagine you're going to see some shops, if there is a secondary market buzz for this book, upcharging on this book. And that's going to be one of those things that kind of sets people apart. Um, Also, there's a lot of people that are doing creative and innovative things um, with the book beyond just selling it for $5, even though that's what Robert Kirkman had originally said. And shout out to our channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics, who did just that. So he took 99 out of his 100 allocated copies, of course, keeping one to read for himself, and is giving them away via the Frankie's Facebook group in a live claim. All you got to do is claim the book and be willing to pay the $5 shipping to get the book. And he is shipping that book out absolutely free for everyone in the Frankie's community, first 99 that claim it. And that's just another reason why we love to support Frankie's Comics and Kevin Fields and the whole team over there because they're constantly doing things like this. And why you need to be in the Facebook group because on top of opportunities like this, you're also getting free shipping on all Frankie's variants. You're also getting an extra 30-minute window to grab those really hot exclusive variants like some of that Peach Momoko stuff. And you heard us talking about Venom 26. Frankie's has a brand new Venom 26 Peach Momoko variant that is sure to get a lot of people's attention as well as that 4.6 Peach Momoko variant. So you're going to want to be in that Facebook group. You're going to want that 30-minute early access. You're going to want that free shipping. And you're definitely going to want a free copy of Negan Lives Number 1. Yeah, it's funny how you mentioned about Robert Kirkman wanting to give back. I also saw articles where he was kind of feeling regret now about the way he ended Walking Dead kind of instantaneous. But either way, Negan lives on. And I'm kind of excited to read this book. Yeah, I am too. And I think the thing about Robert Kirkman and his regret is, man, anytime you're innovative and you try something different the way that he did, sometimes it's not going to go right. So I think he looks back on it and says, you know, his relationship with retailers was affected because retailers didn't know it was the last book. They couldn't order it heavy. So I think this is kind of his make amends move here. So there it is, guys. Those are our picks for books that are heading final order cutoff this coming Monday night, June 22nd. Again, if you want to see the full final order cutoff list, you can head over to supermanscomics.com. But with that being said, this is Brian Jack, Supermans Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.